hello everybody. Um, I don't, there's quite a few in here who I haven't met before. So my name's Jennifer and I'm the co-founder of Project Self Build, which is an educational platform designed to help um, aspiring self builders to build their dream house. Um, it's a real passion project for myself and my husband. We completed our self build last year and we had a huge roller coaster of a ride. <laughs> so we want to try and help other people and make it as, as smooth as we can and share as much valuable information as we can. And one way that we're doing that is that we're committing to twice a month, bringing in an expert on quite a specific topic within self-building and opening it up to everybody in our group and others to come on and learn about the topic. So first of all, thank you for showing up this evening. Um, also, your feedback is very, very uh, much appreciated. And if you've got any other topics or individuals that you'd like to hear about, then please just drop me a message afterwards and we'll do the very best we can to get that personal, that relevant um, topic on for you. So you're not going to hear any more from me right now. And I'm going to hand over to Andrew. Hi, guys. So thanks to Jen and Ben for the invite and for this fantastic platform. So uh, I'm Andrew Jones. Don't know, some of you might know me, some of you might not. Uh, I've been processing VAT reclaims for the last 12 years under what's known as the DIY scheme or VAT 431. Now, in the last 12 years, I've submitted three and a half thousand claims, claiming a total of about, well, certainly over 85 million pounds. Um, but uh, there's always mistakes and knowledge is power in this type of thing. So hopefully tonight I can give you some pitfalls about the do's and don'ts so that your claims can be maximized and there's very little money that you're not getting back that you could or should have been getting back. Thanks. The reclaim scheme is split into two sections, but whichever one you've category you fall into, you do become zero rated in its entirety by a couple of things which I'll get into now, whereby, uh, but you have to be having all your ducks in a row from the first instance. So you'll see on the boards in front of you where it's split into something called VAT 431NB, which stands for new build, and VAT 431C, where it's for conversions. Now we'll get into what qualifies as a conversion and what's a new build shortly. The main difference in the two is how you get to your zero rating. This is a very important part and it can be a very costly mistake. VAT 431NB, which is for new builds, the scheme there is that any contractor coming to site to do work for you shouldn't charge you any VAT in the first instance. Now, if Peter the plumber, and I'm going to pick on Peter quite a lot, okay? If Peter the plumber comes to site and he says, oh, uh, it's £15,000 plus VAT for doing your plumbing, it should be £15,000 flat fee under a new build. Now, Peter says, I don't do this VAT-free mumbo-jumbo. I will charge you the VAT and you reclaim it in your VAT reclaim you will not get any of that VAT back because HMRC will say you shouldn't have paid the VAT in the first instance. So that can be a very costly mistake. If a contractor says he won't do it zero rated, you ideally contact me and I'll speak to him and his accountant. But if he's adamant that he won't do it zero rated, you want to decide if you want to use that person because one, you're paying a premium and secondly, He's someone that doesn't adhere or doesn't understand rules. I'm not saying he can't do the job, but it's just something you want to think about. Whereas if it's a conversion, the rules are slightly different. On a conversion, they should be charging you the reduced rate of VAT, which is 5%. Then at the end of your, at the end of your project, you can submit the VAT reclaim where you not only claim back your purchases at 20%, you also claim the 5% value from your contractor. But again, if Peter the plumber says, my accountant tells me everybody charges 20% VAT, 
you will not get any of that VAT back because you should have paid the reduced rate of five. Now that applies to, you won't get 15% back, you won't get the five, you won't get the 20, you won't get a penny back. You'll be told to try and get it corrected at source. So it's quite important that you pay the correct rate of VAT that's relevant to your project. So what is a new build and what's a conversion? So as on the, on the list, new build is a new build, a greenfield site where you start from scratch and you build a house. The same would rule would apply to a knockdown and rebuild. Now, on a knockdown and rebuild, as long as you knock the property flat, you do not have to uh, dig anything that's in the ground, and you can use part of the slab that's in that's left, add it to the slab, move it within the site. It's of no relevance at all what you do with what's under the ground, as long as you knock the whole thing flat. Then. Uh, converting a building not previously lived in, so that would be barns, churches, chapels, and the like, that would be classed as a conversion. So that would be 5%. Then commercial to residential, as an example, the dentist's office in town, he's retiring, and you decided to bring that lovely Victorian property back into a family home rather than it be let as an office for the next business. So that would also qualify as a conversion, which again would be 5%. So self-build uh, speaks for itself. Technically, that's a new build, but I call, put down self-build because people say, I'm not doing a new build, I'm doing a self-build, although it is very, the same thing. A replacement dwelling, again, same sort of idea as a knockdown and rebuild. Then converting a dwelling not lived in for 10 years. This can be an abandoned house, something that has been empty in the middle of town since you were a child and you've decided to get hold of it and give it a kiss of life and bring it back to life so that would that would qualify as a conversion and then also family uh, holiday homes qualify so it doesn't have to be your main form of residence a lot of people think you can only claim for the one house it has to be the main house you live in it does not but what it cannot be is a holiday home for um, renting and so forth as a business venture. It must be for you personally, your family to use. So not only over and above that, you also have to meet a couple of other criteria. Must be for yourself or a direct family member to live in. Uh, so that can be building for your parents, building for your children and so forth. And it must be for them in the first instance. So there's nothing to say that it can't be sold in the future. That's exactly the same as you're selling your house, but it must be that, that intention at the start. Obviously, circumstances can change and so forth. There's no direct ruling with HMRC about what, what is an acceptable time frame, but it must be your intention for it to be your property. Uh, as I said, not initially sold or rented. Again, there is no time frame on that. That's only to do with the VAT. That's not to do with things like capital gains. I wouldn't be able to advise you on anything like that. Uh, and the planning, it must not have a planning restriction in relation to its disposal in the future. Now, what I mean by that is it cannot be uh, something built around the back of your property whereby, yeah, it's a standalone property in its own right to a certain extent, but there's a planning restriction that doesn't allow it to be sold away from the existing dwelling, because that would subsequently make it a annex. It has to be, uh, the, it must have the ability to be sold once it's completed. Uh, things that don't qualify, any outbuildings, an extension, irrespective of how glamorous and so forth it is. Uh, refurbishment of a dwelling, never mind if you're ripping it back almost to the bare bones, it still won't qualify. Loft conversion, annexes, a granny flat, similar to what I said about the property being built out the back, and uh, renovation or extensions 
of an existing dwelling and listed buildings. Just because the building is listed, there is no specific VAT benefit for listed buildings unless it meets one of the other criteria. There was something up until about eight years ago for listed buildings, but that was taken away. So uh, there is nothing for just a listed building. Uh, I'm only going to cover the main pitfalls tonight. One of them is the time frame to submit, which is probably one of the most important. It, your claim must be submitted within three months of your building control completion certificate. Now that, not everyone can get to that point before they could do with the cash injection. There are other criteria that HMRC will accept as evidence, but the building control completion certificate is a definitive line in the sand. Now, the others, which I'll go mention very briefly, this applies to England and Wales. We have a valuation office which bans the property for council tax. You will get a form from the valuation office advising of your banding. HMRC will accept that. Now, if you get to a point where you're almost at the completion stage and maybe you've been living in the property for 12, 18 months and you need some sort of evidence within the date of the evidence must be three months when you submit. Another option is to ask your building control officer to write the letter. Now, this letter, uh, again, I can send you a draft, uh, but it needs to be on headed council or the business paper, dated, and a name and a signature of the building control officer. HMRC will accept that as uh, acceptable evidence. But again, all these things must be done within the three months of the date, but getting a completion certificate is a definitive line in the sand. You cannot get a building control completion certificate and then wait for the council tax funding and use that as your evidence because the three months is a definitive trigger for on the building control completion certificate. So that's quite an important one. Right, so dealing with contractors. I touched on this just now, where you're getting a contractor maybe to come out to the barn conversion, we'll say, and look around. Personally, I would always say to you, do not mention the VAT. Allow your potential contractors to give you a written quote. That will then show their VAT position. What you don't want is to make Peter the plumber a bit nervous. And Peter's going to charge you £10,000 plus VAT in his mind. And you've told him, my barn conversion is 5%. So Peter's thinking, oh, not so sure about this. So he decides to give you the price. It's £12,000, which is the 10000 plus the 20% VAT. And then he stuck the 5% on. So instead of benefiting from your VAT position, you're actually paying a premium. So what I would say is allow the contractor to give you a quote. If the contractor says, oh, this is a barn conversion, you qualify 5%, yeah, do you? It means they're comfortable and they understand it. Similar thing with a, with a uh, new build. A contractor says, oh, this is zero rated, no VAT on this, it's a new build. Then they understand and they're comfortable. But if you're doing either or, and there is a VAT position, then just don't, don't bring it up unless they do and allow them to give you a written quote which then allows you to say, Peter, I'm happy with your £10,000 for the plumbing, uh, but you've put 20% VAT on the quote. This project is a 5% quote. There's a 5% project or is a zero rated project. So that you, you know that he's, 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 you know, he's nailed his colours to the mast. He's told you his price. So there's no wiggle room then. You've got it in writing and you've not spooked him early doors by trying to confuse him with VAT and him subsequently charging you a premium. So that, 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 that's a very good tip there. Now, quite often um, <clears throat> when we submit the VAT reclaim, we, HMRC will come back and say at the end, when they've been through it, they will say, you asked for 25,000 pounds, we are giving you 23,000 pounds. And the final page of your dreaded letter says, that they're withholding £2,000 because your window company charged you the incorrect 
or you paid the incorrect VAT uh, rate. So by that, I mean, maybe you've paid 20% when it should have been zero. Maybe you've paid 5% when it should have been, uh, maybe you paid 20% when it should have been five. These, HMRC will not reimburse you this money. You have to go back to these people and attempt to get them to reimburse you. Sometimes it goes okay, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the companies are no longer in existence. So it's uh, very important that you get this part of the claim correct from the off. So I've listed here some people who are the most common people that we see invoices at the incorrect rate of VAT. So these people are where you need to be particularly, uh, particularly careful on. So steel fabricators, where they might weld some RSGs in situ on the project, they should be charging you the five or the zero. If you buy the RSGs in, then you pay the VAT as you would normally. 20% if the RSJs are delivered to site and left there and you put them into situ. But if they supply and fit, it should be at your rate for your project of VAT, five or zero. Again, now then PVC companies, I touched on them just now. Plumbers and underflow heating companies, they're a common one. Uh, electricians, and I picked on Peter the plumber, so uh, electricians and plumbers, sewer connection companies. and um, service providers, gas, electric, and water. BT or open reach, it does not, uh, they, you pay the 20% VAT, they do not qualify for a discount rate. So it's only the water, the gas, and the electric. A particularly common one is stove and log burners, because they're coming quite fashionable now. More and more people are buying them. If they supply and fit it, it should be at the rate for your project. Again, if you pay 20%, chances are HMRC will not allow you, uh, will not allow the invoice and will short pay you by that value. Uh, fireplace suppliers, uh, granite worktop companies. It could be that you've bought a kitchen from Howden's, they're the most popular with self builders, and you've gone to a fancy granite outfit and they've come, they've laser leveled the, the worktop up. Once you put your units in situ, a couple of weeks later, they're wheeling in this beautiful granite worktop and they're fitting it on site. That should be, that's a supply and fit. It should be at the rate for your project, not at 20%. Uh, Tamakadam suppliers and other driveway coverings. That's quite a pop common one. And all types of tradesmen, ground workers, window fitters attached elsewhere, painters and decorators. Painters and decorators, if they're quite a large outfit, they'll be VAT registered. And also on the materials, they do like to say, oh, I like this particular paint from this particular supplier. And he turns up with Peter the painter, an invoice for £350 and £70 pounds of VAT on. It's in the name of Peter. And he says, you owe me that money. You will not get that VAT back. So that's uh, quite a common one. A new one on the scene is liquid flow screed suppliers. Now, the reason I'm saying it's a new one on the scene is that 15, 20 years ago, to do flow screed, you'd have had either bought cement and sand and mixed it in a mixer on a daily basis, or had 10, 10 ton tipped daily outside the property and it'd be wheeled in by a plasterer. Since we've gone more into things like underflow heating in this country and so forth, liquid screed providers have become far more popular. So what mean, this means is the people turn up with the machine, pump it in, trowel it up or float it up. It's a supply and fit. It should be at this discounted rate. So all those are the easy ones that you just need to make sure that you're paying the correct rate of VAT on. Now the more difficult ones. Right, so where we need to be careful on these with these particular people are the way that the invoices are presented. Flooring suppliers. Now, most floor covering qualifies for VAT reclaim, 
except for carpet. So carpet is 20% and cannot be reclaimed. So what happens is you go to a retailer in the middle of town and you're buying so many packs of flooring. It can be laminate floor, it can be original wooden floor and some carpet. If they're, supply, if they're just selling it to you, which is doubtful because nearly everyone fit, all most people fit the carpet, they'd have to break down the items on the invoice individually to allow you to reclaim only the qualifying items. So if you're spending £3,000 at the carpet company, and I'll make it easy, it's three items, laminate floor, wooden floor and carpet, and each one is £1,000. It needs to show each one at £1,000, not just an invoice scribbled with £3,000 total on it, because you need to know the value of the carpet to be able to deduct it from the invoice. And exactly the same if they're doing a supply and fit. So the laminate floor and the wooden floor qualify for the specific rate to your project. The carpet does not. So you would have to have, we'll use the example that I used with the three different um, products, wooden floor, a price, fitting of wooden floor, a price, laminate floor, a price, fitting of laminate floor, a price, carpet, a price and fitting of carpet a price. So the find the bottom two items can then subsequently be deducted from the invoice. And bearing in mind that the top four items, so that's the laminate floor and the wooden floor and the fitting on both should be at the special rate for your project. Now kitchens, if it's supply and fit, it'll be at your discounted rate or your special VAT rate for a supply and fit. If it's just purchased, you would pay 20%. Again, the invoice needs to be broken down specifically into items because not everything within the kitchen is claimable. Any electrical item within the kitchen, except for your extractor fan, that qualifies for your discounted rate. The microwave, the built-in microwave, the oven, the hob, the fridge, the freezer, all these items will be charged 20% VAT, irrespective of your project or if it's supply and fit, because they don't qualify within the scheme. But each one of these items, again, needs to be individually priced and charged at the correct rate to your project if it's supplied and fitted, because you're going to have to deduct the value of the non-qualifying items out of that invoice. The labour needs to be broken down as well because the labour for fitting the whole kitchen qualifies. The labour for fitting the fridge, the freezer, the oven, the hob and so forth does not. So there needs to be two labour or fitting elements as well so that it can be deducted specific to each item. Garage door suppliers. Now, I would also put, ah, the, I've got wrought iron gates on the next one. These are identical, so I'll cover them together. The actual garage door or the, the gates qualify for your discounted rate of VAT. The electric mechanism does not. So if you get a garage door and your friend from the golf club, who's quite a handyman, is going to fit it, you can purchase the garage door and the electric pack, but you need it priced separately because the electric pack does not qualify for VAT reclaim. So You'd have to have two separate prices to be able to deduct the value of the, um, elect uh, the electric pack. If they're supplying and fitting, the garage door, and exactly the same with the gates, would be VAT free. So that's the purchase of the, or the supply of the gates and the fitting of them. Then the elect electric mechanism has to be priced separately and the fitting cost of that again needs to be priced separately it would be at the full rate of VAT but it can be identified as a separate identity with separate rates for each one uh, and that applies to wrought iron gates and so forth Ga gates with electric mechanisms the gates themselves qualify but the electric gear does not and then burglar alarms 
This is one where often people are charged VAT when they shouldn't be. But a burglar alarm qualifies to be VAT free. CCTV systems do not, which quite often these days tend to come together as a package. So they would need to be priced separately. And again, the burglar alarm would be VAT free for a new build, 5% for a conversion. And then the CCTV system would be priced at the full rate of VAT being 20%. And then the, if it's a conversion, the 5% be reclaimed, the 20% be not. If the burglar alarm is VAT free on a new build, the 20% VAT for the CCTV cannot be reclaimed. It doesn't qualify. So commonly asked questions. People quite often um, ask how long they have to be living in the property before they can sell. There is no time frame for this. It's, um, well, I'm quite surprised there's no time frame. It's, it's open to abuse actually, but, um, the, and I've had this in writing on two different occasions from HMRC. Uh, but as I said, mentioned earlier, I couldn't tell you about the capital gains position on it. But as far as the VAT goes, once you've had your payout, you can put the property on the market, rent it out, do whatever you want with it. But it must, as, as I mentioned earlier, it must be your intention to live in it in the first instance, but there is no set time frame for how long you have to stay in that position. One thing I would mention, if you are intending to sell or rent it out or your circumstances change, don't market the property beforehand because HMSE will search for it. And if they find it online, uh, you'll have to then explain and justify to the case officer how and why you've had to do this and that it was not your intention in, from, the, from the off to build for profit. Obviously there would be profit further down the line, but it wasn't your only intention, your initial intention. It was initially for you to live in it or a member of your direct family. Fitted wardrobes is a common one because it's quite often said that if it's fitted within the fabric of the building, if you need a screwdriver is another one I hear to take it away, then it qualifies. The criteria for fitted wardrobes is nigh on impossible to uh, meet. They'd be better off saying that they don't qualify. The criteria is when you open your doors, you must be able to see the wall at the back. So they can't be a back to the wardrobe. That's the first one. The second one is you're only allowed one rail through the whole fitted wardrobe and only one shelf. Now, if I was building a house or converting a barn and I was going to the expense of having fitted wardrobes, I know my wife for a fact would not accept nothing more than just one rail and one shelf throughout the wardrobe. You know? So you get a shoe rack, you can't claim. That's the end of it. Uh, the other one is, if you do feel that you do qualify, bear in mind, if it's being supplied and fitted, it should qualify for your special rate for the VAT. Zero for the new build, 5% for a conversion. But you go to some of these places and you try and get something VAT exempt. I'd be very surprised if you get somebody to be a, who would say, yes, we'll do it. Especially the nationals, you know, the common uh, culprits. You go to John Lewis, you want to, fitted wardrobes, I can't imagine that they're gonna get into the brass tacks of the VAT. And next is, they don't qualify. The only outbuilding that you can claim for is a garage and it must be a basic garage. So anything such as uh, any outbuilding, a swimming pool, anything of that sort, uh, you, they don't qualify. Now, we can have a chat about exactly how you uh, do include or don't include some of those in your claim, but that would be done on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. Then I touched there on the garage and a, work, and a workshop I've got put down. So HMRC will only allow a basic garage. So if you have a flat, a workshop, or anything else within the garage, that part of the building does not qualify for VAT reclaim. 
So I'll give you an example. You've got pretty much a basic square garage and 75% through the, into the garage, you've got a wall and a door. And in there, you've got a, a bit of a workshop, a bench and a chop saw. And uh, that's shown on your plans. HMRC will ask for a discount for that area of the garage. So that would mean you would have to deduct from your VAT free claim the block work, the door frame, the door, the lintel, the appropriate sand and cement, the wall ties, the concrete for that area at the back, the roof tile section, and the roof, maybe two trusses or whatever for the correct amount that makes up that extra room. I'll give you another example. You've got a flat upstairs and the staircase would have to be taken out of your claim. The chipboard flooring, the plasterboard, the lighting, all these types of things would have to be deducted from the invoices of your claim. Right, certification. Quite often when you speak to these contractors and you say, my project's zero rated or my project is 5%, they, you will hear people say, uh, oh yeah, uh, my accountant says it's fine as long as you've got a certificate for it. Now, there's no such animal. There used to be pre, we'll, we'll say pre, pre the internet, before HMRC went online, where you had local regional HMRC offices. You would contact your local regional office if you were doing the project back then, and they would give you at the start of the project a very nice package uh, which would have your claim forms, uh, a nice file to store your invoices, and inside there, there was a certificate. It's, I would describe it probably as a certificate that explained to contractors how and why you should be charged VAT at zero or 5%. There's no such thing these days. Realistically speaking, presenting the contractor with your planning permission decision notice should be suffice to appease them and to appease their accountant. And my suggestion is you give them a copy of that and they attach that to your invoices in their records so that if they ever get a VAT inspection and the VAT inspector says to Peter the plumber, you did this zero VAT, can I ask you why? And he says, it was a new build. The VAT inspector says, prove it to me. He says, yeah, the planning permission is attached here. Not everyone will accept that. Um, when I do these shows, like Grand Designs and Home Building and Renovating show, the tendency is that I might see people two or three times over the course of their build. You come early doors to these types of events and you say, uh, oh, we're about to start. We've come here to look at windows, doors, you know, the, the big stuff. Then the following year, you come to my stand again. You say, and yeah, uh, we're wind and water tight. It's going well, blah, 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 blah. Uh, except one or two of the contractors have charged us 20% VAT. They wouldn't accept our planning permission. In that case, come to me and I know someone who will create the certificate for your project. And there's two types of certificates she does. There's a two page certificate which is what I would suggest would be suffice. And there's a 15 page report that she does. I certainly don't think anybody doing a self-build needs anything like that. Now, this is not worth the paper it's written on between us, but if it appeases the contractor and smooths the way to get the project done at the correct rate, it's worth its weight in gold. So, but I, I certainly wouldn't tell you it's something you need or must have, but it does explain in a very basic way to Peter how the fact that he paid 20% VAT to City Plumbing for the boiler, and he's now selling it to you technically at zero VAT or 5% VAT, that he's not out of pocket. And it also then explains on a technical side where if he takes the certificate to his accountant, It'll explain to the accountant under what legislation we're trying to get the project zero rated or discounted to 5%. It might be something that you like because it gives you a bit of a comfort blanket. 
but it's certainly something I wouldn't say that you need. Things to remember are common errors. Don't use your contractors' accounts at suppliers. Open your own accounts. What you don't want is a plasterer coming to site, we'll say, and he doesn't like your main supplier because he says the plaster coming from there tends to be a bit damp. And he likes to pick it up at X, Y, Z. And he's there for three weeks. And every Friday, he presents you with his invoice, which is in his name, and says, you owe me £140 this week for those 10 bags of plaster. And the following week, the same. And the last week, the same. So you've got three invoices. But it's in the name of Peter, the plasterer. Although you've reimbursed him, you've paid for it. You've got no evidence of that irrespective of the fact if he puts your delivery address or anything of that sort on the invoice, it's still his invoice. So do not use pe people's con. If you're in that situation, the, elect the electrician has to go down to his supplier. Ask him to go to the trade counter, phone you while he's there, give your credit card number over the phone, ask him to bring the invoice back for you. And then you've got an invoice with your credit card slip on, in your name. That can then go in your VAT reclaim. Uh, so there's that one. Now, people often think that creating a name for your project is going to make you sound um, more important to the supplier. Uh, we will say that you're uh, building a house and it's going to be called Polly's Palace and you decide to call yourself Polly Palace Builders. That is a potential problem where HMRC will probably ask you to evidence every payment with that on that it's come from a bank account in your name. Now, pre me doing this about 15 years ago, I used to sell building material for a living. So slightly off topic here, guys, but uh, something for you to think of from the other side of the fence in relation to a builder's merchant. And every one of these businesses wants your business. And the builders merchants, the middle management and the upper management of the builders merchants will look at you in a far greater light than probably a contractor because you've got a lot of money to spend in a short space of time. It's a major thing going on in your life. So you're going to be well organized and chances are you've got your funding in place. So as far as they're concerned, you're less of a credit risk. So the builders, merchants, the middle management, don't feel intimidated. You're going to walk in and you feel as if this isn't somewhere you should be. And the noisy guy with six vans outside and his three lads on the coffee machine and so forth is having a bit of banter with the people behind the counter. That's just the people behind the counter. Don't, don't feel that you're intimidated or unvalued or feel that you need to do something to add credibility to yourselves, I can assure you they want your business, they want your money. And what I would say to you as well, another tip is uh, speak, shop from two or three different merchants and get to know somebody within the merchant who is in a position of power where the sales of the the the, the sales or the rates and the how well the business is doing and so forth. He's in a position of power in that way. Maybe not the manager, maybe the assistant manager, where he knows, oh, that guy's back again. And we didn't win his last uh, inquiry. I've got to win this one. And don't think that just because ABC builders have been the cheapest on first thing, the second thing, and the third thing, that they're then going to be the cheapest on the fourth thing. Right? Like the old bank advert used to be, they're hiking you in. Right? It's one of your jobs during the build is to allow the builders, not allow the builders merchants to make too much money on your back. And familiarity does tend to breed a little bit of contempt. Uh, it's just a bit of a thought from the other side of the fence there. Um, again, a lot of people that build their own house are self-employed or they have businesses. And you may well have accounts in place, Screwfix, Travis Perkins, Juicen, and so forth. You need to open new accounts in your names personally, 
even if your business is not VAT registered and your business incorporates the name, uh, your name, P Peter Morris Plumbing, it's still not Peter Morris. It's still a business. So Peter Morris Plumbing, need, Peter needs to open another account to say Peter Morris. And it is far easier because you're shopping for yourself at Travis Perkins and you tell the lads on the counter, uh, those three boxes of screws are for the business and that's for my self-build account. Put using the business accounts, although it's convenient, it's already in place, and putting a reference will not be looked at kindly at HMRC. You will probably have to evidence the payment from a personal bank account. So something I did touch on earlier, the time frame to submit, just a reminder, that is very important. Uh, make sure you pay the correct rate of VAT that's acceptable to your project, and you only get one opportunity to submit. So it needs to be correct the first time. They are uh, slightly unforgiving. I'd say they're fair, but they are slightly unforgiving. Uh, the map you see there is the areas we've done VAT reclaims. There's a bit of a uh, mention there about the, the, the COVID situation and so forth, but I'll explain it to you. HMRC historically used to pay VAT claims out on four weeks. When I started doing this 12 years ago, I knew that if I submitted a claim on the 1st of March, 1st of April, or there or thereabouts, the client would get his package back with his letter, and the following week, the money would be in the bank. The last, pre-COVID, for the last four years, they'd been paying out on about six weeks. The week COVID arrived, um, claims that were already in with HMRC at that point were paid out within about six months. Claims that were submitted during the, during the first lockdown period and up until maybe this time last year were paid out on 12 months. It was taking them a year. The claims that are going in since Christmas or maybe December, when we had that last sort of burst, that last spout of uh, COVID uh, or Macron, is it? Uh, claims that have gone in from that sort of date they're being paid out on nine months and they're still being paid out on nine months. And it, ha it recovered briefly, but it's gone back to about nine months again now. I'm slightly sympathetic with HMRC. Uh, it's, they look at every document that you submit. It's very labor intensive. I'll give you an example with us now. Uh, we target maybe a dozen jobs a week. If we were knocked out with COVID for two or three weeks, that's 36 jobs that haven't gone in. Now, I work Saturdays and Sundays. I work every day of the week. There is no make it up time. How do you, how do you get back on track? It's a very, very long-winded process. And that's where HMRC are. So having been at that position and did have a reasonably long recovery ourselves, I am slightly sympathetic. I know you could say, well, they're a big organization. They can bring other people in. I appreciate that but that's where they are. Now, if you're finding this of use, I've got a YouTube channel, uh, it shows there, and I will be doing specific videos for more in depth of the stuff that I've touched on so far tonight. I've got a couple of booklets that cover all of what we've touched on, especially detailed ones like the kitchen and the garage and so forth. But if you do want to reach out to me, I can post you a hard copy or I can send you something on email. Right, so that's me done. Oh, um, brilliant. You did I'm, a fantastic job. <laughs> uh, if you're listening to this and you're not part of our free Facebook group, please do join. It's just Project Self Build free group on Facebook. And we put all of our uh, announcements on there for any other masterclasses that we've got coming up. The other, my other two requests are number one, please have a think about any other topics that you'd like us to cover and just drop me a message. 
And also, if you've got any feedback or comments from this presentation, we would really, really appreciate that. We're constantly trying to improve. Um, so yeah, that would be very welcome. And a massive thank you again to Andrew. This is absolutely fantastic. Jen, Ben, brilliant platform. Guys, support the platform. It's free. They're thinking of you. It's really good. Let's get let's get this going places. I'm quite happy to take some questions if that's a, an option. And what I'm going to do, because we've got quite a few questions in the chat, is I'm just going yeah. to go through them systematically. <laughs> okay, right. I'm going to work through. So we've got a question from Dave. He says, and I know you might have covered some of these later. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, it's fine. Go on, fire away. Okay. He says, what about outbuildings as part of a new build, e.g. home office and garage are separate to house, but it's all part of the same planning application, new build on a site that has never had a building on it? Uh, I'm assuming the house and a separate garage which has an office in. Okay? Yeah. That, right, so the, the, ga the basic garage will be able to be claimed for, so that's the infrastructure. Uh, the garage door, the window, if there is one, the concrete, the roof tiles and so forth. But they will want what they call an apportionment. In the chat, I called it a discount. Right? They actually call it an apportionment, which means that you would have to list the items that make up the office area and deduct those from the actual claim. So that would be, as, as I touched on, the wall, so the three, the, the outer walls, the wall dividing, if that's how it works, the door or the external door, the concrete, the plasterboard, the lighting, and so forth, the two or three trusses, the roof covering, and just a total value saying, uh, for argument's sake, uh, four, 500 pounds plus VAT, which is 100 pounds to be deducted for apportionment for the back office. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, the next question is from Eric. What percentage VAT would the kit house company who have supplied the kit for our self-build charge? Okay, so uh, I'm presuming you mean a timber frame or a SIPs company? Yeah, hi, yeah. So it, it, it is, it is exactly that. So it's a Scott frame house. Okay, I know Scott Frim very well. Right, okay. Excellent choice, sir, if you have just committed to Scott Frim. Right, so Scott Frim are supplying and erecting the frame, I'm assuming, here, right? No, they're, they're only supply. Only supply. Right, supply. so, so they, would, they would charge you the 20% VAT, yeah. and that, yeah. that can go in your VAT free claim. Okay. If they were supplying and erecting it, then it would be zero rated. Okay. Perfect. That's what they've done. Thank you very much. Yeah, there we are. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent um, um, session this evening, by the way. Great. Thank you. That's, thank you. Thank you. But if you've got any questions, sharing knowledge costs nothing. Okay. Great. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. The next question is from Luke. Um, Hi, Luke. In the instance that you have a main contractor who is performing hundreds of supply and fit tasks. In my case, they're invoicing at 5%. Do their invoices need to be broken down for every single item purchased and performed? Right, okay. So again, I'm gonna make an assumption here. It's a conversion. And, is, yes. Right, okay. And uh, they're pretty much doing job lot for you or certainly a vast amount of work. That's correct, yeah. All the right. electrics, okay. all the plumbing, all the waste. Okay. Right, okay. So uh, I'm, how are you paying these people? Monthly drawdown or what's your arrangement with them? Uh, five stage payments, which align right. to okay. uh, self-build mortgage milestones. Right, okay, yeah, perfect, right. So I'm assuming you've got some sort of contract with them or something in writing that you're paying them X, Y, Z at this stage, this stage and this stage. That's correct. And I, I do have a detailed breakdown of all of the items that they are provisioning are. Okay. and fitting, but it's not there down to the, the no, sort of that's detail. Fine. That's fine. No. So, but it's, 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 it's explaining what you're paying them for. Yes. There we are. That would be perfect. So you'd, you'd include the five invoices from the contractor in your VAT claim and attach the uh, contract or the schedule of works or whatever they, it's described as to 
the first invoice or the last invoice so that the case officer that gets your claim can look at each invoice and say, right, okay, yeah, that's been paid for that, that's for, that's for that, that's for that, and so on. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, no problems. Okay, the next question is from Gary. How about other services, i.e. building control? No professional fees at all qualify for VAT free claim. That's now, a one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the things that don't qualify, again, I've got a detailed breakdown list available. The things that don't qualify in the main very quickly are any professional fees, even structural engineers, soil testing, anything of that sort, your architect's fees, uh, even structural engineer, and any tools that you buy or hire without the driver. So what I mean by that is, uh, you buy a wheelbarrow on a cement mixer, it doesn't qualify, and you hire a, a dumper from Travis Perkins, it doesn't qualify. Oh, I didn't realise that. Okay. But, but there's a, there is a bit of a but here. If you were to get a dumper with a driver from a company, then technically they're doing work for you. So that would then qualify for your special rate for the job. 5% or zero. Well, I'll give you another example where uh, a ground worker comes and come, hire of a JCB, a track machine, turns up on site, cuts the foot in, pours the concrete. He's, he, he's doing a job for you. So that would qualify then for your special rate for the job. Okay. But if you went and hired the machine outright, and you drove the dumper around, then you, you can't claim for that. And the same for scaffolding. That's another bugbear. It's a real bone of contention. Can't build a house without scaffolding. Health and safety will be around. Doesn't qualify for VAT free claim. Okay, that's really useful. Thank you. Um, I'm quickly just going to go to a couple of people who've got their hands up. Bear okay. Me, just see. Um, Adam, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, so just a quick one, obviously, if I'm buying a kitchen, say, from somewhere and for all the units, all the appliances, it's £20,000. Now right. I get the so-called kitchen supplier to put on my invoice, kitchen units, £20,000. That won't be enough. Won't you, it? You, no, you'll have to get them to break it down because HMRC says, well, hang on, there could be electrical items in here. Right. right. You know, what, 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 if they put kitchen units only yeah. and put, put, maybe put a little bit of a support there, we'll say uh, eight cupboards and worktop and so many um, down cupboards. Yeah. Then that would probably be okay. Superb. Thank you. No problem. Brilliant. Okay, thank you for everybody being really patient, by the way, with questions. So we've got Sally Moore. Um, the question uh, is, building on Dave's question, what if you phase the building? So house first, VAT reclaim submitted, then detached garage, drive and gates, etc. built a year later, all under the same planning permission. I'm getting the sense no chance. Is it one claim only? It is one claim only, yes. It is one. Okay, and Clyde, um, his question is, so kitchen unit supplied but not fitted is not VAT exempt? There's a question. Uh, right, give it to me again. Okay, so kitchen unit supplied but not fitted is yeah. not VAT exempt? No, it's not. So uh, you would pay the VAT as you would normally at the store, and it included in your VAT free claim. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to Cassandra. You've got your hand up. Would you like to unmute yourself? Yeah. Hi. Sorry. I actually, I'm I'm her uh, husband. But um, uh, my question uh, is um, around services like groundworks. So there are right. certain jobs where you're paying, you know, portion of the bill is for professional fees, you know, their, their calculations based on, right. on what they measure. Yeah. But, but yeah. they also send guys to site who drill holes and, and actually do work. 
Um, right. Are you able to sort of apportion so, an amount for yeah. the work they so, do? So, so you say drill holes, right, which makes me, and you've mentioned professional service. I, I'm thinking it's ground testing or yeah. soil something. It's classed as a professional fee, the whole lot, I'm sorry. The whole lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even, even though they're, you know, they're using machines on site like diggers and stuff like that, digging holes and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but all, all they're doing is test holes for you, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it is a professional fee. It's it's part of the test process, which is a professional fee. Okay. Um, and something I thought sorry. I'd share, and I, I, I don't know whether it's, um, whether it's kosher or not, but... Um, the scaffolders that we've used. Um, I know they, what you're going to say. Lay, split the labour on the rental. Yes. Yeah. Is that kosher yeah. or you, should I just keep quiet? <laughs> I, 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 to be honest, I don't know if it is. In theory, what they've done is correct. Um, and I don't know of further down the line where a scaffolding company has been pulled on it. I've never yeah. heard of it, uh, but trying to get a scaffolder to do it is quite difficult. Do you want to share with the group the story about it? Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was really straightforward. I mean, I, I just I just said to them, you know, it was a new build project and, you know, I, I, I gather stuff zero rated. And they said, well, yeah, hire isn't, but labour is and, and we'll happily split it such that it, I think it was two thirds labour, one third hire or something like that. Yeah, so the the, the labour element became VAT fee, and you only paid the VAT on the on the higher part, and then Correct, the, the, yeah. and the, and then the weekly fee or whatever after a certain period of time. Well, I got super lucky actually. It was a flat rate, and uh, over ah, COVID that are. came in very useful because obviously the right. timeline got yeah. stretched. But yeah, 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 yeah. But the truth be known is I don't actually know if it is legit, but I have heard about it on a number of occasions, but I've never heard of a scaffolding company getting into trouble off the back of it, but I often hear scaffolding companies saying that they're not doing things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, maybe I got lucky but, with who I used. Yeah, to. yeah, maybe you did, but you don't ask, you don't get, guys, so always yeah. ask. Yeah. Okay, well, th thank you very much for your presentation. It was brilliant. No problem. If you've got any questions, give me a shout. Brilliant. Cheers. Okay, we've got a couple of questions from Anne. So the first Hi, question Anne. is, do you need to submit all invoices or just the ones where you wish to reclaim VAT? No, only the ones relevant to your VAT reclaim. Okay. And the second question, we have installed cameras. Are they allowable or is this CCTV? I would expect it to be classed as CCTV. Sorry. Okay. Um, a question from Heather. Hi, Heather. How do you convince your contractors they shouldn't be charging you any VAT. Do you need to show them any proof or certificates? I, I need to go back to a couple of mine. Okay, yeah. So it's really important. It's a new build. It's zero rated. It's really important you don't pay these contractors the VAT. Um, giving them your planning permission decision notice should be suffice. But if they're adamant that they want it, accredited, certificated, and so forth, reach out to me. I know someone that will do that for you. Uh, I'm going to throw her under the bus here. I think she charges 200 quid, right? Uh, it's only a two-page thing. She reads your planning. Uh, she puts your specific details on there, and she explains in a very simple terms to a contractor how and why he should be charging you 5% if it's a conversion, zero if it's a new build, and then the legislation so that if he takes it to his accountant and says, oh, I've got a right one here, she's given me a piece of paper and told me that I don't, I'm not to charge a VAT. The accountant looks and he says, oh yeah, legislation 708, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know a bit about, it's correct. She doesn't have to pay you the VAT. So, it's it's a comfort blanket. It's a supporting document. It's not really worth the paper it's written on. But if it uh, gets you to the end goal, it's money well spent. And if you're not too sure of the exact ins and outs, if you've got this to refer back to, it, it, it might help you as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, a question from Anna. So... 
Although only a basic garage qualifies, is that still the case if the garage is attached? We have a large space, like a craft studio, above our attached garage, so would that qualify? The, question, the staircase is external rather than inside the garage. Okay, so there's no way of getting from the house into your, I'll call it a flat. That would be the case, you'd have to do an apportionment for it, because it wouldn't be classed as part of your house. I'm assuming that the house and the garage is joined on and you've got an external staircase going up to your hobby room and that would be classed as a non-qualifying room. But if you wanted to send me your specific planning, I'll have a look at it and make sure that that is the case. I'll also give you a tip of what to declare and what not to in relation to how you do the apportionment. Fantastic, thank you. A question from Matt. Um, in what format do you submit the, the invoices in a claim? Do they have to be in a certain order and need explanation, etc.? Yeah, if you, uh, if you download the forms, you will see that you have to fill in for every invoice, uh, the date, the name of the supplying company, description of the goods, and the VAT value that you're claiming for. Uh, that's the vast majority of your, of your invoices. But what you'll also see is some invoices don't show VAT as a separate identity, the likes of B&Q and um, not Wix. There is another one of the sheds that don't show VAT as a separate identity. They have to go on a different form where the sale value goes on there. And then it's worked out collectively for all the documents. The VAT is worked out at the bottom. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Um, a, a question from Aidan. Are elements like wood stores, housing for air source heat pumps, zero rated, if not attached to the building envelope? They're not, they can't be, they can't be claimed and they can't be zero rated. Now that uh, the, the housing for your um, heat pumps or your heating system, if you're buying a GRP type housing, if that's the sort of thing you mean, you won't be able to include that in your claim. But if you're putting a concrete base in, so you've bought some aggregate or there was some ready mix left over from the footing or the slab and you put it in there, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if you're buying a housing or you're buying a pre-made wood store, you won't be able to include that in your claim. Okay. A uh, question from Nicola. She's got a couple of questions. So the first okay, one, um, is it correct that for invoices under £100, they don't have no. to have your name and address on? Right. No invoices have to have your name and address on. You can walk into Travis Perkins today and order 100 rolls of six-inch insulation, and you say, I'm going to take them with me. I've got a truck outside. And the good lad behind the counter puts cash sale on it, and you've got an invoice, that's fine. The, the, it's a myth that you have to have names and addresses or the plot address or anything of that sort on each document. The name and the address only becomes an issue if it's got somebody other than you on it. If it's got you on it or nobody at all, uh, it's just. Um, Branch 1201 of Travis Perkins, cash sale till number two, it's fine. B and Q, you go there, and I don't even know if they can offer an invoice or a till receipt with your name on just by going in and paying at the machine. Okay. And the second question is, you can reclaim VAT on delivery charges in... Uh, oh, can you reclaim VAT on delivery charges included on an invoice for supply of goods? You can. If you, if you pay carriage charge or delivery charge or anything like that, and it's on the invoice, so we will say uh, juice and invoice, sand, cement, delivery charge, all that can be included as one. If you've got a separate invoice for waiting time or delivery charges or anything like that, 
that does not qualify and can't be claimed. Okay, thank you. Um, a question from Rupert. For your basic garage with a workshop attached, if the build was all invoiced at zero rate, would you then have to refund some of this as part of the reclaim process? No, 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 no. If it was built by a contractor at zero rate, then you've got no invoice as such uh, to include in your VAT reclaim. They may write to you and ask you if, it, if there's anything in there that's included, but no, you wouldn't have to reimburse HMRC with anything. Okay, um, a question from Rupert. If your trade is doing supply and fit on NB and they're VAT registered, surely they will reclaim VAT and then charge you at zero rate so nothing is actually lost. Correct, yeah. Yeah, they, the, their purchases will go into their VAT reclaim every quarter and they charge you zero. So they will be getting a VAT. If, if this is the only project that company is doing in that VAT quarter, they'll be getting a VAT refund at the end of the quarter for the materials they've bought and paid the VAT on for you and they've collected no VAT. So th that VAT quarter will show a reimbursement to that company. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Um, a question from Kate. Do your invoices have to be in your site address or can they be in your residential rented address, e.g. building that's right fine. set up? Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. fine. You've got to be living somewhere while you build a house and that's acceptable. Brilliant. By the way, Sally uh, also wrote a comment saying you're doing a brilliant job, Andrew, in capital letters. I could listen Thanks, to Sally. you hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. OK, don't worry, we haven't got too many left. I'll, I'll aim to do, let's say, three more questions. OK, no probs. <laughs> you're going to run out of voice otherwise for tomorrow. No, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Just I want to I'm going to get a Nando's and, uh, and a drink. OK, right. We'll be quick. Uh, so from right. Tony, what is your current position with regards to living in your self-build before the completion certificate is issued and submitting the VAT reclaim? OK, so that's fine. Uh, how you what you would have to do is either get it banded for council tax by if you're living in England and Wales, uh, it's the valuation office. If you're living in Scotland, each local authority has their own different methods. So if you need more info and you are in Scotland, come back to me. But you'll have a valuation office document. HMRC will accept that within three months of the date of the issue of that document as your evidence without the completion certificate. If you're past that point, you could ask your building control officer to write a covering letter saying that the house is habitable, fit for purpose, but not yet at the point of building control completion. And again, you could use that as your evidence. Brilliant, thank you. We've got a couple of other really lovely comments saying that it was really useful. Excellent, thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Okay, this is going to be the final question. Um, it's from Anne. Can you file online or do you have to physically send um, to HMRC? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. sorry. I this read yeah. That. Yeah, 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 I understand, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. This, the scheme is very, very old school. You have to physically send your original invoices and write everything in by hand on the forms and so on and so on. Okay, brilliant, thank you. But I'm really sorry for everybody that didn't get their question answered, but at this point, Andrew will not be getting his Nando's if we carry on. Um, so first of all, if you've got any more questions um, or you'd like to get any more advice, there's a QR code on the screen. So please just scan it um, and you can pop your details on there. And then after the show, Andrew will get back to you and answer all your questions because he is an absolute legend. So yeah, massive thank you again. Everybody have a great evening. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.